Hi, this is Lady Lex UK, and this is a dreams tutorial. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at collectible objects, how you're adding uh, an account of those objects to a score, and how you can use that score as in game currency um, to buy things, open things, do things. And just to show you uh, what I mean by that, here is a demonstration. Okay, so I've got my player. I'm going to walk up to this door and it says the door is locked requires 500 stars so I can't go through the door but I've got all these lovely stars that are there ready for me to collect so let's go collect them there we go I've collected my stars I've now got a thousand points so let's go over to the door and our door opens and removes 500 points as currency for opening the door and I can go through. So there we go. This is what we're going to be building today. Something quite simple, really. Okay, I've got nothing in my player. This is just a bog standard uh, puppet. Uh, there's nothing in there. Um, we have two microchips, one for the door, uh, one that's housing our variable, and we've got microchip on each of these stars. So let's start off with this microchip chip. Cheap. Cheap, 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 cheap. Right, okay, here is the microchip. Um, this is ho holding the variable that's counting how many points we have gained by picking up stars. Right, um, this, it starts off at, at, at zero. I've set its minimum value to zero. You can't have less than zero stars, so uh, I've set that minimum. Um, there has to be a maximum. Um, there isn't like infinity. I wish there was uh, an infinity maximum here, but uh, there's not. Um, as long as you've got that high, as high as, as the, the maximum that you could possibly collect in your game, you'll be fine. Uh, a million is probably um, okay. Uh, so you could probably leave that alone. So that, but that's the situation with that. So we've just set those two. Otherwise, everything is exactly the same as the default um, gadget. Um, as you can see, its current value is linked to a number displayer, and that is what is to be displayed in the top right-hand corner. You can prettify that and make that much nicer than I've done, um, but that's what that is doing. Now, um, the reason it is in this separate microchip, you might be tempted to put it inside the player, because that seemed the obvious thing, because the player is collecting these stars. Um, the problem with that is it will reset if the player dies. Um, uh, so we like to keep that separate from the player and then that variable um, will just remain with with the count even if he dies uh, if you uh, have level linking uh, then you will need to set this um, to be oops uh, you'll need to set set this to be uh, persist in dream um, so, and then have a copy of this microchip in every single level there is a tutorial on level linking uh, that explains uh, and there's also one about persistence uh, that explains this particular um, thing. I'm not going to go into it here and I'm also not going to go into actual scores and scoreboards. Um, I'm going to refer to this as a score, but it's not actually going to actually post to a scoreboard. Uh, for that, uh, check out my tutorial on scoreboards and uh, and you'll see how to convert this variable into something that actually posts uh, to the school board. Okay. Right then, let's have a look at our stars. This is where all the magic happens. Here is our star. Now, uh, star shapes are actually relatively difficult to make in um, in dreams. Um, so I, instead of struggling, I went into the dreamiverse and I found this lovely thing, which is by Protean Nativity, pink plastic star. It's exactly the sort of thing I thought would be suitable as a collectible. So I've grabbed that and popped that in my world. So thank you to Protean Nativity for his his or her lovely star. There it is. Um, it's double-sided, so you, you can see it's spinning and it's very nice. Right then, uh, one first thing you need to do with your collectible object, whatever it is, we just scope into it because it's a group. Um, make sure its physical properties are set so that it is not collidable. You don't want the player to be repelled across your map 
because it's walked into a collectible star. So make sure it's non-collidable. You want the player to be able to walk straight through this as if it's not there. Um, that's quite important. So make sure your object is non-collidable. Right, uh, let's go into the microchip. Right, first thing to note is we have a rotator. I've stuck that on top of our, stuck that in the middle of our star uh, with the gizmo pointing upwards like this and it turning around like this. This is um, like shorthand in gaming to tell the player that this is a collectible. They'll recognize it's a collectible because it's spinning. Uh, it's obviously a style choice. You don't have to have your collectible spinning. They can just be floating there or bobbing up and down or whatever you fancy um the animation of of what this is doing the movement is, is entirely up to you rotating is actually the easiest thing to do uh, but obviously you can do more complicated things as you get more um proficient uh with the the tools but there we go rotator that's the easy thing to animate to show the player that it's a collectible as you can see there is a trigger zone this green box um you want that to be uh, around your object, um, not too big and not too small. Um, this is about, about right for this, this shape, so it encompasses the entire star but not, doesn't overrun. You don't want it too big because um, you might have a star next to it. You don't want that to activate um, the, the wrong stars, so it looks a bit peculiar. You want it so that the, the player is um, triggering your star at the right moment. So that's that trigger zone. And it's looking for possessed controller sensors. It's looking for a player uh, that's that's being controlled. And that's it. There's no other uh, changes in that. That's the entire trigger zone. Right, this trigger zone, when detected, is setting off this uh, counter. This counter is a one zero counter. It's acting as a boolean. A boolean is an on-off switch. So this is saying, uh, once detective, we're going to turn this on and say, what well, we're now collecting our star. And uh, this sets off all of these gadgets. So the first thing it does is it sets off a sound effect. You can choose whatever sound effect you like. Um, there's loads to choose from the Dreamverse, or you can make your own. So lots of options there. So I've put, put that in, and I've just... Um, link that to the power on this um, sound effect. Make sure your sound effect is set to play once. There we go. Um, right, up here we have our variable modifier. Now, this is looking for the variable called stars, which we've already seen in our microchip. And it's going to add a 100 to the value when it's powered on. So it's linked up to the power at the bottom here. And so as soon as you um, set that counter, it's going to add 100 to your score. So that's the, the, the collected part. This keyframe here, uh, what this does is um, I placed a keyframe down. I selected uh, my uh, star and made it invisible and then pressed record so that's made this star invisible now you may wonder why am I doing that well what is happening is I'm going to make the star invisible and I'm going to replace it with this text displayer this is these two things are going to happen simultaneously so the star is going to become invisible and this is going to be shown instead and then it's going to be connected to a timer I've set this to 0.5 seconds so that the, um, the display here is enough time for the player to see it before we actually destroy. Just click that to the power on a destroyer that is placed there and that destroys the, um, the star. Now the reason we have this delay is we want to make sure that, that first of all our variable modifier has worked and has added our score. We want the player to be able to see our text um, before the, the whole thing is destroyed. So if I didn't have this timer and I just stuck the destroyer immediately on there, everything would happen simultaneously and you really wouldn't get the effect that we're looking for. So that's it, that's our start. And all I've done is I've cloned it numerous times. Now you can 
um, change our star. So uh, let's go into um, let's go into our sculpture here. Uh, it's currently pink. We can move through the hue cycle like this. This is a nice easy way of just changing. Let's make them make it purple like that. So I've now got a purple star. So this is going to be a special one. And so we're going to change the variable modifier. So instead of adding a um, hundred to it, we're going to change that. So I'm going to press L1 and X together. And that opens up this new thing, which is a number pad for uh, for slide. Instead of a slider, we've got a number pad, which is fantastic. I'm really glad they've added this feature. So I'm going to change this now to 200. So this one is going to be a special one. It's going to uh, give 200 points instead of 100. And we need to change this also. There we go. So now this, this one, this purple one is actually going, this blue one is actually going to give us 200 points instead. So that's how you would alter that uh, to whatever points that you want. There we go. Don't, don't forget, um, you don't want to be going into e each of these individual ones. So set out your your stars of different colours with the different amounts first before you start cloning them. Um, and then you can place them where you want to place them. There we go. So we've, we've changed the score on that one. Right, here is our door. Let's see uh, what this is doing. Right then. Hmm... Okay, so there's a trigger zone to start with. This is going to detect whether the player is in front of the door. Uh, this is connected up to these and gates. And um, let's look at the, the top one, shall we? So we've got a uh, trigger zone uh, to this and gate. And we've also got a calculator here. Uh, this is the current value of our microchip that's called stars is going into our calculator. And our calculator is looking to see if the uh, number is greater than 499. Now you'll notice that um, in, in this, this one, because I'm not collecting one at a time, I can do this, uh, I can do this uh, so that I know that it's going to be 500 or more. So we need to know whether uh, you have the right amount of currency to open the door. So it's looking to see if it's over 500. Now, if I put 500 in here, so if it, if it was over 500, it wouldn't work if you just had 500. So I'll just put it down slightly to 499, and that gets around the problem. If we had an extra button in here that was greater than or equal to, uh, that would solve our problem. But um, this doesn't do it. So um, this is how I've chosen to do this. There's different ways. If um, if you, you are collecting them one at a time uh, and you do need a, a precise thing, then you're going to have to use um, uh, 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 two calculators and, and work out if it's uh, this one or this, if it's greater than... Um, 500 or equal to 500 you need an or gate in there uh, it makes it a lot more complicated so th this method is 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 the simplest so 499 if it's greater than 499 it's 500 there you go the door will open so we're going to put that calculator that's a true calculator so yes so we're in the trigger zone and yes we have 500 and then it's checking to see if our door is shut so I've got a counter here. This is a 1-1 one, one counter. So I've set this to, so the door is shut to start with. So I've set that over to 1. Um, so it's checking to see if the door's shut. Is the door shut? Do you have 500 points? And are you standing in front of the door? If all of this is true, then we've got our variable modifier here. And it's looking for stars. And we want to remove, subtract 500 points uh, from your total as payment for opening the door. Now, there is no subtract operation type. You have to use add. And we're going to add a minus number, and that sorts out um, sorts that out. 
Uh, so we did when powered on, we're going to remove 500 and we've linked up this to its power socket. So that's immediately going to do that as soon as all of these things are in place. Uh, if you wanted a button press in between here, then obviously um, uh, you would have uh, another uh, addition to that AND gate where you've pressed a button to open the door. But in this instance, I'm just having it so that you walk up to it and it works. Right, we're now um, going to uh, change our shut door to decrease the count to make that a zero. So now this is no longer true because our door is open. So you won't be able to do this again. So it was not going to take another 500 because all the circumstances. So if you had, um, in this example, we had a thousand, um, it's not going to continually take 500 and 500 and 500 and 500 and take it, take it all to uh, continually open the door because we've told it that our door is now open. This counter over here is um, is activate, activated to say, I want to open the door now. I've got this here in case you wanted to use a timeline or a delay because otherwise it's a, it's a one frame. So we, we want it so that um, we can have some sort of timed thing. And I've got a keyframe here. Let me just select that. That's the door in its open position. And I have set this so that there is a slow power up so the door will swing open. Like so. Um, I've also got a sound effect of the door creaking. Sound effects are really important to give a sense of what is happening in your world. Um, use sound effects, it, it makes a huge difference uh, to to how it, the game feels and makes everything more realistic. So make sure you remember to put in sound effects um, and you'll find that it, uh, your, uh, your game is transformed, really. Okay, so that's what happens if you've got the correct amount. Let's say you don't have the correct amount. So I've got a calculator uh, looking to see if you've got over... You've got 500 or more. Uh, we put a not gate in there. So now we've got, are they in front of the trigger zone? Is the door shut? But they don't have enough coin. Then we just display this text display. The door is locked, requires 500 stars. And that's it. There we go. So this is the basis um, of a shop, really. Um, you could... Uh, use this method with the variable modifier, etc., etc., um, to uh, to create a shop to see it check and see if the player's got the right amount of currency, remove the currency, uh, and then give them the object. So it's it's exactly the same principle. So you could use this and develop a, a nice little shop um, from this basic code. But otherwise, here we have a collectible that. Uh, you can use as currency. Hope that was useful to you. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in your dreams.